his app Nadasadhana helps musicians to create magic by making effective use of AR, neuroscience, learning theory, and digital signal processing. So he's going to give us a treat explaining his journey, the process behind coming up with this app, which is going to demonstrate life. You know what? When I enrolled him, my worry was that how much will I have to spend to get the Sat Sangat, the accompaniment. Then I realized that, thank God. Of course, I, I wanted to have him any which way, but then I realized that here is a fantastic blend of, you know, we can have him and you can also have a demo of what he has developed over a, time, over a period of time. And the way I ended up encountering Sandeep Ranade was also interesting. There is this festival that happens in Pune, Pune for most of us. And this festival, uh, I dreamt one day that there is a computer which is playing Hindustani classical in this festival. That's what I dreamt of. And then I wrote a tweet about it saying that what a nightmare that I dreamt about a computer playing in Savai Gandharva as the festival is called. And to that, many of my friends responded, one of them specifically who is a dardi of Hindustani classical music, otherwise also Carnatic, saying that, do you know of this gentleman called Sandeep Pranadi? And that's how I ended up getting in touch with him and meeting eventually when I went for, went for my TEDx talk at ISA Pune. And of course, we connected well with the Khana and the Ghana connection. <laughs> and uh, well, it's obviously fantastic, a pleasure to have him here. We are going to have an open-ended session to begin with. He will be telling us his journey for roughly 90 minutes or so, or little less than that. And while doing so, it will be flexible depending on his mood, your farmaish, and the way session goes for up to two years, uh, two hours, sorry. <laughs> Instead of watching a watch, I'd like to watch a calendar, <laughs> not two years. Right, so may I welcome, with a round of applause, Sandeep Ranadi. I call myself the geek guy because I'm part classical singer and part software engineer. And I've been passionate about both music and problem solving from a very young age. At about my 12th grade, I hit my first major crossroads in life. As you can guess, I wanted to pursue both. And I got the advice, you're an idiot. Pick one or die, or pick one or fail at both. I have sort of this allergy to the word no. So I said, I'll do both and see what happens. What's the worst that can happen? And immediately, I ran into my second brick wall. All of the senior singers or you know, musicians have said that to become a good singer, you need at least a minimum of 10 hours a day of vocal practice. Same logic applies to academics, I suppose. Right? If I do 10 hours of academics a day and 10 hours of music a day, I'm left with 4 hours for everything, everything else. Now, naive that I was, I, with great enthusiasm, I got up one day at 3 a.m., practiced my music for 5 hours, and then went off to college. This lasted for a few weeks before I felt very sick because I was sleep deprived. And very quickly it became apparent that I need to optimize both my music practice and my academics by at least a factor of two to manage to do both without killing myself. And my first inspiration was a couple of famous algorithms that I ran into. Hopefully some of you are familiar with these. The first one is bubble sort and the second one is quick sort. And while they perform exactly the same task, one is simple and slow, the other is a little bit more complex but is blazingly fast. So a million numbers to sort will take 100 minutes on bubble sort of it. And on quick sort it will take 0.2 seconds, one fifth of a second. That's the speed up of 500. So it was very inspiring that if I can get a factor of two on either side, I'm good. This was a factor of 500. So I started looking into this problem and 
looking at all of these different domains, I started to optimize my workout further. So I was doing or taking ideas from neuroscience, from graph theory, from learning theory, from concrete and discrete mathematics, combinatrix, deduplication, software testing methodologies, and many other things. And over time, over the last 25 years, my practice has actually come down quite a bit. So when I was in engineering, doing five hours, which was for a couple of weeks, then four hours, then when I went to my uh, to Johns Hopkins on a master's, it came down to three hours. <clears throat> See, time pressure start increasing, and then I have to compress it further. Microsoft, different beast, two hours. Then I got married. More time pressures. <laughs> so luckily, I was able to squeeze it into one hour. This is ten hours into one hour. And I did this for over a decade, all the way through Google, and then in 2015, I left Google, my wife left Apple, we decided to come back to India. 2017, we were blessed with a twin boy and girl. More time pressures. Thankfully, <laughs> just before that, few insights hit 15 minutes. Now, 15 minutes was a very interesting milestone for two reasons. <clears throat> the first reason was that it was far more effective than by one hour. Which was very surprising to me. Why would 15 minutes be more effective than one hour of practice? And as a musician who has been doing this jazz for so long, I don't see large spikes in ability. The improvement is slow and steady over months, years, decades. Two, three days of this workout, 15 minute workout, and my ability jumped through the roof. Very surprising result. So I said, I need more data on this. I decided to teach this to my students. My students actually are a fair nice mix of uh, abilities and backgrounds. So ranging from very, very beginner level students to Grammy award winners. From people who have been learning from me for a few months to 17 years. From ages 6 to 78. So nice group of, <laughs> nice control group that I could have tested this on. I taught all of them this workout and to my astonishment and large surprise, all of their abilities jumped to the roof. Why? This was a big, it's still a big puzzle, but I have a conjecture. This is my neurological conjecture as to why this might, might be happening. <clears throat> See, in the one hour, I think the brain was optimizing different abilities, vocal abilities, as separate neural pathways. But under 15 minutes, or in that threshold of time, I think the brain thought of it as just one large, gigantic connected ability. So it was probably creating this very hairy, connected, super highway of neural pathways, which was all interconnected. Fantastic stuff, right? This is very useful. Because that means I can go from a mean to a harkat to a khatka to a murki to an alap to a sur, all within the same neural pathway. So very efficient. The second advantage was more of a psychological advantage. So when I ask people, to commit one hour per day. This squeezes in 10 hours of practice. Most people will say, oh my god, one hour per day? Cannot do it. I'm too busy. Just not possible. 15 minutes on the other hand represents a psychological time slice which is manageable for even the busiest of people. So with that, I decided to publish this as an online course. I called it Nada Yoga. Because it was basically yoga for the voice. There are spiritual angles to this as well, but we will not get into that, this talk. With this, I think this was the first uh, combination of the geek and guy to, to bring about the, the birth of geek guy. In 2017, <clears throat> a few months before the birth of my twins, I was approached by a student of music. Let me do that. And she had major problems in a lot of areas. So she asked me for help. She was very frustrated. She had been learning for eight, nine, ten years before from other teachers, and she was not making any progress. So she asked me for help. So I said, sure, let's let's start. First session. She was not able to identify or hit five of the 12 notes, like at all. 
very extreme example actually. I have not encountered anything like that before. I would course correct her notes. I would say this note is a little bit sharp, lower it a bit, bit more, perfect, soft. Or this note is a bit flat, raise it a bit, bit more, perfect. Every time she sang for one hour. And towards the end of that hour, she was thankfully coming close to those notes, which meant that she was not tone deaf. That's also a concern. Then she went off and practiced for six hours, six days, one hour each, by herself, unguided, came back the next week, and all of that progress was wiped out. So we began again. See, I have this allergy again to things that I have to repeat myself in. Because that is a great way to figure out if there is automation needed. Great opportunity to automate something. So I asked myself, why is this happening? Why is this such an extreme example of inability to hit notes or recognize notes? If you go back a hundred years to the Gurukul style of education, the student would go stay with the Guru. The student would go stay with the Guru, live with the Guru for years on end, practice every day, learn every day, and for every mistake that the student will make, the, the Guru will correct the student immediately, every time. This is going to create very strong neural pathways in a few weeks. And those pathways will never actually go wrong. So the students that came out of this system were incredible artists, right? Uh, two generations back, all of these artists were. This was really the golden era of classical music. So if you look at the ratio of guidance to self unguided practice, roughly five or six is to one. Today, this is the Skype age of learning. I can't have students come stay with me. Students can't afford to come stay with me or learn for more than an hour a week. So we are forced into this situation where there is a 1 is to 6 ratio. 1 hour of instruction and course correction to 6 hours of <coughs> unguided self-practice. Very, very dangerous. So I realize that this is a much larger problem. And she is certainly an extreme example of this. But this is a big problem in the world that needs to be solved. So I said this is a great opportunity for an app that tells you where the note is, what the note is and how far away from the perfect note it is. I assumed that there would be thousands of such apps on the App Store. This was 2017. I did a quick search, thousands of guitar tuners on the App Store. Nothing that really came close to what I was looking for for a vocal to me. So I said, how hard can it be? Let me take a crack at it. I'm a software engineer. Not a DSP much, but we'll, we'll see. Turns out it's a very, very difficult problem to solve. My first algorithm came out of a paper from University of California, Santa Barbara. Very nice paper, very accurate, very fast. Took my battery life on my iPhone 7 from 48 hours to 20 minutes. Can't have that. On mobile device, I cannot have this algorithm running. Next solution I invented, I had to now do a deep dive. I couldn't use a paper anymore. Third algorithm, fourth algorithm, ninth algorithm finally worked fast, accurately and efficiently. So I said, okay, great. I'll slap on a quick UI which gives biofeedback. This was a very simple uh, UI that I created for her. <coughs> and I sent her a beta version. This was my first iOS app. And in two weeks, she came from a score of 5%, which is bad by even beginner standards, to 80% in two weeks. And I think more importantly, she stayed above 80% ever since. So the app had literally rewired her brain. Now that made her very happy, that made me very happy. And I said, okay, since it helps one person, maybe it will help five other people. So I decided to name it Nada Sadhana and published on the App Store. This was a very simple version of the app. It is just a tuner, nothing else. There were four levels of the tuner and a tuner, and that's it. Over time, I realized that I now have a tuner which is quite accurate, actually very accurate, very fast, and it can actually do more than just tuning. 
it, it is the ears of the app. So I wanted to see if I can apply it to other problems that I'm we need to solve for a while. See, when I'm on stage, I typically have a few instruments accompanying me. So there is there is a tabla, there is a swaramandal, there is a tanpura, there is a harmonium, at least. And if I had software emulations of these that are realistic, that I could practice with at home, then my practice would be so much more effective, which means that I can go from home to stage and I'll be very happy, I'll be very comfortable. Right? Because I might not have access to these accompanists when I need them to be there. They are very talented, they are very busy. So whenever I want to practice, they might not be available. And I would like to practice all day long, ideally. So I decided to focus my efforts on this instrument. This is a Swaramandal. <coughs> very beautiful sounding instrument. Beautiful ambience. 40 strings to tune for every rock change you make. And especially nowadays, it has become kind of a pay to travel with. And audience's patience is, patience is also sort of dwindling, so it's not easy for me to sit there for 20 minutes, tune it, and then have the audience sit quietly. This was a perfect candidate for some kind of a software version of the app, because I can carry it in my pocket, it can tune in an instant. The caveat was, an important caveat, that it has to play the Swaramandal like I would play the Swaramandal, accompanying myself in concert. So there was some kind of AI necessary at this point. I had never done AI before. So this was a good learning opportunity for me. I tried this first actually in 2013 when I was at Google with access to the Android team. There was the right next to my building they were sitting there. It, this, this experiment failed so miserably. And the reason was that Android has a deal breaker problem. The audio latencies in Android are anywhere from 20 to 200 milliseconds. Which means that once you tell the OS to play a sound, it might play anywhere from 20 to 200 milliseconds later. For real-time instruments and instruments like the Swarabandal, where you will stroke 40 strings in a fraction of a second, or a tabla, or most instruments will not tolerate this kind of latency. What you need is a sub-millisecond latency. So I gave up. I said, it's not going to happen. And there's no point in creating a programmatic sort of program version of the Swarandal either because I was saying every, every day I'll sing something different. So what's the point? Now I had an iOS app. And I honestly didn't have much expectations from this platform because I did it on Android. I thought if it doesn't work on Android, why would it work on Apple, right, iOS? Because this should be at parity, <coughs> not even close. Apple's latencies on audio are sub millisecond. They have building blocks for audio, video, machine learning, neural networks right in the hardware, which are so powerful that it became a delight to code these problems and solutions in. Because I could just focus on my problem domain, not worry about anything else. And it just played beautifully. So in fact, let me do a very quick demo. Textures. <laughs> Was that a reaction? 
and it creates, there are so many rules of accompaniment, some of which are written down, some of which are unwritten. So it becomes a very complex instrument to model. As a singer, I don't, I've not learned to play the tabla. I, I know enough to sing with it. But to play the tabla is a whole different ball game. So I started to learn that. I didn't actually learn to play it, but how the playing happens and all that. And uh, I'll do a little demo of the tabla. Hopefully the sound will still be all right. So I have three levels of the AI. There is the basic level, which is basically no AI. There is a smart level, which is a sort of a balanced AI. And there is a max, which is exactly the same level of AI. I would love to have that one day. That is impossible. Just a name. So I'll start with the basic level. So this is no variations, it's no play basic theka. Oh, 
so it really sounds amazing because it feels like I'm on a stage and it will be an entirely different universe that I can hear and two minutes you'll be able to hear that as well.
expertise it was not even in my area of comfort because I have been doing distributed systems and operating systems and file storage and big data and deduplication and all of these other things so I got to learn all of these cool things I got to learn iOS development Swift Swift UI machine learning I got to learn neural networks genetic algorithms evolutionary program design DSP see all of these things I think we have had a very shallow introduction to in my either engineering or even masters for that matter, very surface level. But the deep dive it required for me to get the app in place was something that I had never anticipated before. It was very fulfilling, very challenging work, but I was glad that I got the opportunity to, to actually play around with this. There was some very advanced partial differential calculus that I had to do because I had to simulate the Tanpura string as it strikes the curved bridge to create that characteristic buzzing sound and then simulate that cotton thread called the Zawari on, on that bridge to create all of the interactions of the Tanpura in, in the air, in the wood and in the resonating channel basically to create a very realistic Tanpura sorry, technical talk long diversion for not much value. It was for me. I needed a very realistic Tanpura and sample Tanpura just will not cut it. <clears throat> there was biofeedback that I was doing in the app to show notes in a way that was challenging in a, in a way and then also rewarding to the dopamine system to give it that, <coughs> that spark of aha that I got my note right. So that then it becomes an exponentially converging process. Psychoacoustics, the perception and the psychology of sound. <coughs> and then some UI, UX, logo, graphic design. But also, I was very fortunate to have solved problems that were never solved before. And in my own homegrown, sort of crude ways, but they work. 
the tuner algorithm is brand new there is a new genetic algorithm that has created to like in such an environment where there is so much sound and noise app can hear itself but it was still accompanying me very precisely in a car so there is a genetic algorithm for isolating music detecting music from a noise signal and it can actually detect up to 70% noise and just pick out the music from it there is creativity modules for every rag and tal and every instrument there is ah this is my pet topic this i would like to call this computational aesthetics i don't think there is a term like that and i want to be on the record for the first person to have called it that because i want to do something further in that as well but every instrument needs to play the right phrase but also it needs to play it beautifully it has to be a beautiful phrase whether it's a rhythm or percussion harmony or melody it has to be beautiful so that computational aesthetics is a module that basically creates beauty, beautiful phrases <clears throat> it also needs to be correct and appropriate so the instruments have to play the right thing at the right time in the right way and then with 10 plus instruments i needed something that was like a conductor level ai that helps all of these instruments come together in collaboration and not step on each other's toes and sound musically beautiful and correct and all of that of course there were there were people that didn't like the idea of me mixing music and ai some people call it sacrilege some people said apparently it's an insult to mass saraswati somehow The problem I was trying to explain was that, or the solution that I created was not trying to replace musicians at all. I was trying to enhance, I still am, trying to enhance musicians. So I was not building a self-driving car. I was trying to build a very realistic flight simulator. So when you don't have a plane lying in your backyard, you can practice very beautifully and effectively on the realistic flight simulator and travel everywhere in the world. But when you do get your hands on a real plane, you will now enjoy that I did not kill anybody. In fact, I would say the app helps increase creativity. It will accompany me in unexpected, creative, spontaneous, but correct ways, which will create new ideas, new improvisations, new inspirations for new compositions. There are 26 instruments in nine genres. So 26 factorial combinations of different arrangements that you can actually make and explore. And so it's now become, I think, a musical creative partner where it will not only help you push the boundaries of your own art form, but also pursue <coughs> possibilities that never existed before and reach the frontier of music and go beyond that. <coughs> And that brings me to my third part. I think I'm like an oyster. Because every time there is something that bothers me or if there is a strong emotional response in me, I will tend to quote it in a song and release it. And this is very therapeutic, very healing for me. I have composed over 100 songs under the pen name Nadaran. Songs that are inspired by events in my life, average person's life today. In classical music, typically happiness, piya garaave. Why? I can have chocolate cake. Sadness, piya gai paradis. And then saas There are so many other subtleties and flavors and emotions that you can actually feel in day to day life. I have songs about Traditional things as well, like Pancha Mahabhut, five elements, mindfulness, letting things go. But I also have songs about digital detoxification and Facebook addictions and working from home. <coughs> I've done songs about relationships, romance, fighting with my wife <coughs> and having to apologize to her. I have songs about annoying co workers. Very annoying co workers sometimes. Irritating co workers will not create a composition. Very annoying co workers, there's a new composition in, in town. 
and I've done things upon Kali Yuga and Vertigo and everything in between. So I'm going to share some of these with you. The first song is about a fight that was caused by Facebook. <coughs> the words are Ja ja re ja sajanava Ja ja re ja sajanava Phone pe nazare bichhaye jaye Hama pe nadaro nazare Ja ja re ja sajanava Keep looking at your phone Don't you dare look at me Mukh kitab padhe din aur raat Mukh kitab padhe din aur raat Anguliyo se sab se karat baat Hama se na karo gati Ja ja re ja sajanava Keep talking to your friends on Facebook Don't you dare talk to me Don't you dare look at me this is not a hymn, hello. Ja, 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 sajanava. Ja, 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 sajanava. Ja, 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 sajanava. Ode pe nazare bichha. So, 
This is Raj Chandra Kaus. Dina rena sajana karata chintana. Dina rena sajana karata chintana. Screen a day can have another in the mother. Manana karata bite, jeevan a dinner rena sajana karata chintana. Jabba de kuto, they cut the hair for him. Jabba de kuto, they cut the hair for him. Neil a danta lagae carnival. Neil a danta lagae carnival. E mail a dinner tarapan of Ulajan. Tantra Nana cut in a sort of a dinner and a sergeant of Karaka Chinta. I felt very helpless. 
I'm a software engineer, I'm a singer, what do I do? How can I help? And in that desperate moment to find some optimism, some hope, there was a new composition that came around, which was Na Karo, Na Karo, Suno Mori Baat. I had the app playing 10 instruments with me by that time with the recording feature. It didn't have the video then. <coughs> So I recorded the song, I sent it out to 8-9 people on WhatsApp and put it up on my YouTube channel. And in 15 minutes my life turned upside down. First thing that happened was I got a call from my Guruji, late Sangeet Marthand, Padma Vibhushan, Pandit Chasarajji. I had not sent the composition to him at that point in time. He called me and said, Kam se kam 300 logo ne gaana mujhe beja hai. Who are these 300 people who had the guts to send him a WhatsApp message with a random song attached? I didn't, I didn't do it myself because I was not sure what the reaction would be at that point in time. And then he said, Basant mein bahar le, because it was in Raag Basant. And then he said the third thing that, he said, Tabla bahut badiya bajaya hai, kisne bajaya hai? <laughs> meant the world to me because two things. Very few people know this, but Pandit Jasraji, in addition to being a phenomenal legendary singer, was a phenomenal tabla player. He started his career as a tabla player and then he went into vocal music. So that compliment from him made, meant the world to me, it meant more than the world to me. And the second is that the app had passed the musical Turing test. <laughs> so a huge milestone for the actual app. Then I was, I was already overwhelmed with all of this and I was browsing on Instagram. I just, I had the account but I had not really done anything with it. So I said, okay, maybe I'll put this up on Instagram, why not? So I started scrolling and I saw my own face staring at me, shared by some other profile. Something called me or I said, not possible. But I looked at the profile, it was a verified profile, eight some million followers. I lost sensation in my feet. I couldn't feel my feet anymore. How it had reached him, I have no clue. And this, this was very overwhelming for me. <clears throat> and then this happened. Outpouring or inpouring of love, of appreciation, of blessings came in from all corners of the world, from artists that I have looked up to all my life, from stalwarts of music, and I did feel happy and I did feel proud. But the biggest sense that I felt was an overwhelming sense of relief. Because in my journey of Nada Yoga, of Nada Sadhana and of Nada Rang, I had met a lot of naysayers who didn't like things I was doing. And this one song authoritatively destroyed all my roadblocks in one second. It was acceptance for my singing, my shortened version of my riyas. Nobody cared how many hours I was doing anymore. None of these people asked me how many are you doing only 15 minutes of riyas. No, they assumed that I was doing much more than that. The lyrics went down very well. All corners of the world people responded by saying we needed this optimism and you brought it to our phones. And that felt really, really, really good and really special. And for the first time I felt that all of my three babies had sort of come together and I felt for the first time in my life a true geek gayak. Not just a geek, not just a gayak. Because when I was a geek, I would try to hide my gayak side from the other geeks. When I was a gayak, I would try to hide my geek side from the gayaks. Because I wanted to fit in. But I realized I'm neither. I'm a new species. I'm, a, I'm the geek gayak. And this identity crisis basically resolved itself and I felt very free and wonderful. And it has been absolutely wonderful for three years since that point. So that's, that's the first part of my story. <clears throat> this gentleman's name is Mr. Amar Jain. He was actually planning to come here today. I don't think he's here today, is he? No. 
because he's also in Delhi. But he was uh, he was giving a talk on accessibility in Apple, and the Apple guys introduced him to my app because he said, "Oh, I have to sing." And then he went home to his or to his hotel room at night, installed the app, played with it, and sent me a very angry email. He said, "Amazing sound, fantastic capabilities. Never heard anything like it. I can't use much of it because I am visually impaired." The app is not fully accessible. I had meant to make the app accessible from day one, but it it didn't have so many users at this point in time, and so it was on my list of to dos. And now that one person was blocked on this, it became my highest priority. Now, see, the problem is that when you can see things, you take a lot of design decisions for granted. Where a button is, what the layout is, what the hierarchy is. and when you can't see a lot of that information can be lost completely so i had to rethink how he would have seen the app or visualized the app imagine the app <clears throat> i blindfolded myself sat in a dark room for 4 hours and tried to reimagine what the app would be and do for somebody like that it took me a month to completely redesign the app and i gave him a beta version he he sent me back a video on the same app and he said this is the song that i made with the app that is a frame from the video he was able to do an entire recording audio video 10 instruments mix it master it and share it to me on whatsapp he looked very happy and that made me very happy and i had no idea that this little thing had set off a chain reaction that i would never imagine in a million years he was also dealing with multi billion dollar corporations trying to get them to make their in inaccessible apps accessible and these were apps that he depended on every day these were food delivery apps and taxi service apps and online payment apps <clears throat> he had written, written the email after the email and said yeah yes we do it multi billion dollar corporations large teams it took me by myself one month with twins to make the app accessible this is not there is no excuse for any large corporation not to do this but it doesn't affect their bottom line so he talked to a reporter about me saying this is one person he made the app accessible for me and there are all of these other corporations who are ignoring me she wrote a little piece and i had no idea but she nominated me for an award that i didn't know existed This is the NCPETP Emphasis Design Award given to people who improve some form of accessibility or inclusivity. <coughs> and I got a phone call one day that I'd won the award, which I didn't know existed, and it felt very nice, but it felt undeserved almost because I would have done it anyway. I mean, it was my responsibility. The only reason I'm sharing this story is for any person who writes a software or a website. Please take an additional 20 minutes to make it accessible. It takes literally a very short amount of time, but it means the world to people who can't see or have partial visual impairment or color blindness. So I made the app accessible to color blindness as well as partial hearing loss and visually impaired completely. And maybe there are five people using it in the world. Doesn't matter. But without that, they will not be able to use it at all. So it is our responsibility as as engineers as product designers as creators to make sure that we have subtitles on our videos our websites are accessible our posts have an alternate text so this is a public uh, service public awareness uh, notice <clears throat> in 2019 i got to attend my very first wwdc in person this is apple's worldwide developer conference and it was probably for the first time as a software engineer that i felt like a rock star they make you feel like a rock star it is absolutely wonderful so if you ever get the chance you will enjoy it and then i also got to attend the apple design award ceremony and it felt like the oscars beautifully designed apps were showcased on the big screen big as a huge screen the screen is as big as that wall amazingly designed innovative apps with large design engineering marketing teams behind them doing some fantastic work and they some of them won the coveted cube 
and for the millionth of a second, the thought did cross my mind also that hey, maybe, <coughs> perhaps, maybe, and it left because I realized that I'm working on a very niche app for Indian music by myself with no design expertise, no marketing expertise or interest, and it's just me. It's not possible. So I left that thought at that doorstep, came back. Added more rags, added more tals, added more instruments, added more capabilities, and then a couple of years later, unexpectedly, I won the cube. And while it felt really amazing, I want to describe a particular feeling that I had. When you have a team to work with, when you have co-workers and colleagues, there is a feedback loop. There is appreciation and critique that goes around, and this is very very useful. Because it keeps you grounded, it keeps you in check. It also gives you occasional pat on the back. But it's a very healthy thing. I didn't have a team. I still don't. I'm by myself. So whatever I think is right, I'm doing. There are beta customers that are giving me very valuable feedback. But the appreciation comes in very interesting ways. Right. So for me to win this meant two things. One is. This was the first time that Apple had given this award for any app related to Indian music or culture. So that felt really huge. And the second was I'm only the second second Indian to win this. So it felt like a giant rocket engine that was added to my motivation levels. So I'm very grateful to Apple for that. <coughs> this is the current version of the app on the App Store. And uh, while it works well, I wanted to add more features and add more capabilities and so in the last three months, two and a half months, I threw out all of that code and started writing it from scratch. One of my friends said, you're an idiot. Who in the right mind would redesign an Apple design award winning app? And I said, I'm your idiot. Because I wanted to do more. There are things that I couldn't do before that I want and these are some of those things. Currently, there is only one solo rhythm instrument, which is a tabla. As soon as you add one more rhythm solo instrument, another tabla perhaps, things get a million times more complex. Because there is also the additional complexity of playing everything in the right way at the right time and having it synchronize and sound beautiful and correct. But there is also the collaboration and the jugalbandi aspects of things, which makes it very, very difficult. So I've added a second tabla. I've added a 12 instrument drum kit and a Latin percussion instrument called the Cajon. And now I'm working on a guitar and a bass guitar which are both percussion rhythm and harmony melody. So very complex beast of an instrument. And I was asked to sing a Malhar composition by a few people, at least a few people. And since it's not going to rain today, I think it's safe to for me to do that. Because when I was in Microsoft in, in Seattle, whenever I sang Malar, every time it rained. 100% card record.
Oh, 